Anytime you make a commitment to do something like this, you have to earn the right to do it. It's such a special race. This is Boston, and Boston is strong. It doesn't matter if you're the fastest runner or the slowest runner. There's 30,000 different stories and 30,000 different pieces to that race. I'm David Gervais. This is my first Boston Marathon. My Boston mile is the start line. The Boston Marathon is the crown jewel of, of marathons. And to be a part of that is the icing on the cake of, of any running career. So Marathon Monday will be my 25th birthday in addition to my first Boston Marathon. And I'm looking forward to the experience. I'm Lori Redmond. I'm a Boston Marathon volunteer. My Boston mile is mile 10. I work the hydration stop at mile 10 and I've been working that for over 20 plus years now. I volunteer as a way to, to pay back. When I ran the race in 1987, I realized what an important role the volunteers played. So I turned around and said, I, I really want to pay back that effort. Um, there's a certain level of, of excitement that is out there on the course and feeling that is always a great reward for actually going out there and volunteering. I'm Greg Sullivan. I'm the assistant baseball coach at Boston College and my boss in Miles 21. Mile 21 is kind of a special mile for the Boston College community, but more importantly, from Pete Frades. Um, Pete is our director of baseball operations at Boston College and was diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease, also known as ALS. And he kind of looked at, at his family and, and said, there's no time to, to hang our heads. This is a great opportunity and get some awareness out about this terrible disease that not so many people know about. Pete started this ice bucket challenge and you know I don't think any of us knew what it was going to turn into. But when I get to mile 21 uh, on race day, I'm going to be humbled that I had the opportunity to carry out Pete Frady's mission and more than anything I'm going to be grateful. I'm Dave McGilvery, race director of the Boston Marathon. My Boston mile is mile 21.5. In 1972, I decided I wanted to run in the Boston Marathon. And right around Hot Break Hill, down I went. I called my grandfather. I said, yeah, I apologize, I failed. I quit. He said, nah, you didn't quit. You learn that you cannot go along in life and set reckless goals. You train, and I'll be there waiting for you next year. I said, deal. Two months later, unfortunately, my grandfather passed away. I was ready to go for the 1973 Boston Marathon. Finally, at 21.5. I go down and I look behind me and I saw the sign, the Evergreen Cemetery. And I realized that's where they buried my grandfather. His tombstone's right there. I said, wow, he said he'd be here. So I picked myself up and I kept going and I finished in four and a half hours. And on that very day, I said, I'm gonna run this race every year for the rest of my life in honor and tribute to the lesson that my grandfather taught me. And I've run it for the last 43 years in a row. I'm Bobby Gibb and I'm the first female finisher of the Boston Marathon, and my Boston mile is the final mile. For a grown woman to run was way outside the social norm. So I said to myself, once they know that women can run, the race will open up. As the men's race was about to start, waited in the bushes for a few minutes, and I jumped in. And to my great relief, the men Loved it. The men said, we won't let them throw you out. I turned onto Boylston Street and a huge roar went up from the crowds, went down, crossed the finish line, and I just had such a sense of elation. I had done what I set out to do and I was making a social statement. I really felt this was a pivotal moment and it was going to change how things are for women. And it was just this incredible sense of triumph. <laughs> 